Electrive Studio, powered by P3. Hello, here we are again, uh, this time for electrive.com. You can also call us Electrive. Um, we are here in our studio powered by P3 at the EVS in Stuttgart. Uh, with me on the couch is uh, Professor Martin Steinbuch uh, from the University of Technology in Eindhoven. To be honest, you're so distinguished and you do so many things uh, that I don't know where to start. So maybe you could give us a brief introduction and tell us who you are and what you're doing at the moment. Yeah, I'm a, a professor in Eindhoven and I have a, a huge group. So together with my wife people in our group, we work on uh, robotics and cars, basically high-tech systems. So basically I like uh, all things that move. So uh, robots move. We, last year we were uh, a world champion in soccer playing robots. Um, so we were very proud of that. This year we became second. But, uh, but also in my group we work on uh, new software for uh, to make diesel engines cleaner. But also we work, of course, on electric driving. Exactly, and that's our topic. Obviously, we love uh, e-mobility. So, um, and you are actually an EV lover uh, as well, I might say. So, um, uh, is there already Simone uh, too, or is it stellar at the moment? Maybe tell us a little bit about your affairs. Uh, you prepared yourself well. Yes, I call my my car Simone. Uh, that's a, a Tesla Model S. I already have it four years now with my wife. We drive to to holidays south of France uh, uh, many times. I've driven now 160,000 kilometers with my car, fully electric, four years. Uh, I ordered a, a Model 3, but as you know, in Europe, you have to wait for that a little bit. So I hope in, in one year from now, I will have a, a Model 3. So looking at uh, the Model 3, I mean, already in 2014, you, you mentioned that you can't wait for the Model 3. So do you think uh, that this is the breakthrough for electric mobility? Well, not only in the Model 3. I think what you see now is that many OEMs are now preparing to launch vehicles which are uh, in a mid-class mid range, uh, so many more people can actually buy it, with a range of at least 300 kilometers. And I think that will be, uh, will be the start of a big shift towards automobility or immobility in general. Um, so the Model 3 is one, but we have also the, the, the Opel Ampera E, as it is called here in, uh, in the Europe, or the Chevrolet Bolt in, uh, in the USA, uh, and the, the new Nissan Leaf, the Renault Zoe, uh, with, uh, they, they will have larger batteries in the future, I think, and uh, BMW i3, etc., etc., etc. So you will see a, a, a huge uh, increase of, in the amount of models you can actually choose from with a, a good range, say more than 300 kilometers, for an affordable price. And that will, that will yeah, make the difference in the market, I think, between 2018 and 19, we will see this, this uptake. But uh, Theo uh, Eindhoven, they actually work on something very different, which is uh, solar racers uh, designed by students. So that is rather do rest and then fast yeah. charging. Uh, where do you think uh, this, this could apply in reality? Yeah. So, so f let me first uh, state that, that at this very moment, uh, there are the solar races in Australia again. Eh? Uh, every two years there are the solar races in Australia. Uh, and there are our three technical universities from, uh, from the Netherlands are all competing there and doing very well. So uh, last time uh, Delft and uh, Twente became number one and two in the Challenger class. So that's the class where you sit, sit uh, inside the car, a uh, single occup occupant. But uh, the Eindhoven team actually made a very nice cruiser class car which is meant for families. And also this year they participate, at this moment, this is the second day today of the races, they are number one in their class, in the cruiser class, and they've made now a car for five people. So actually you can drive on the solar sun, on the sun, with five people you can drive up to 120 kilometers per hour speed. So that's really amazing what they did. What is interesting is that from the first team from four years ago, uh, the first Stella car, there is now a startup in Eindhoven, which is called Lightyear. And they are going to make uh, a real commercial available car, completely covered with solar cells. And you should basically see those solar cells as a way to extend your range. So you could also phrase it in, in, in the European countries as a range extender without the need for fossil fuels. So you can extend your range depending on how much sun you have. Moreover, if you are working and your car is doing nothing, actually it still generates electricity or power energy for you. I think on the longer run, solar cars or solar powered cars will be very interesting for 
uh, areas in, uh, in the world where there is a lot of sun, but no infrastructure yet. Think about the Middle East or India. I think those countries will be a very interesting market for solar-driven uh, cars. Um, coming back to countries where there is not so much uh, sun, but uh, like in the Netherlands, for example, but there is a lot of infrastructure yeah. nowadays. So the, the Netherlands are actually fast forwarding uh, electric mobility, one could say. Uh, what do you think other European countries can learn from, from the example? Well, one of the things we are proud of in the Netherlands is that we have designed open protocols for communication uh, between the car and, and the charging point and also between the charging point and the provider. Uh, so also the back office, it, there are uh, several open protocols. I think that's really relevant to make it possible for market parties to, ent to enter this new uh, era of, uh, of uh, commercialization and, and, and developing business uh, with e-mobility. And that's a good thing. So open protocols is relevant. I think also where the Netherlands uh, is a showcase is where we show that actually can, you can very well work together between uh, governmental uh, organizations uh, industry and knowledge institutes. We we understand this triple helix and that everybody has, it, has its role and that you have to respect each other in that role but at the same time help each other to accelerate uh, for the better uh, cause of things. And that, that's, that's I think where, what we are doing strong in the Netherlands and we are happy with uh, so many uh, charging uh, uh, options uh, in the Netherlands and what you see is a, is a, is a shift now towards uh, higher power uh, charging stations along the highways uh, but at the same time still you see an increase of public charging stations also uh, in, the, in the cities. Yeah, we just uh, talked technology transfer, but there's also the question of knowledge uh, transfer. Uh, you as a professor, if you look at the coming generation, what would you recommend uh, them to study? What's, what's the future? Well, first of all, um, uh, you have to ask your child if, if he or she is 17 or 18 and thinking about what next, what he or she really likes. Because I recommend to everybody, choose wherever your heart is or wherever your heart starts to beat from. So do what you like to do, basically. That's the first thing. On top of that, uh, I realized myself uh, about 10 years ago that if you think about automotive, automotive is no longer a mechanical engineering thing. I'm working at mechanical engineering but I'm a, basically a control engineer. So that's, that's about th system thinking. And, and, and modern con cars are connected cars, are uh, electromobility cars. So the modern car and the car of the future is not a mechanical engineering thing anymore. So 10 years ago, we started with a whole new educational program, both a bachelor and a master. And what is unique in the world is that our bachelor program, which is now running six years, and this year we attracted 100 first year new students doing a university study in bachelor in automotive but this bachelor study is positioned at the department of electrical engineering and not anymore mechanical engineering linked and that's very interesting because yeah the new the new education should be at the system thinking level system engineers uh, with a lot of electrical and computer science in it and human technology interaction and still of course also mechanical engineering but that combination of those disciplines that is relevant for the modern automotive uh, engineer of the future. And that makes it a very interesting study because as an engineer, you learn to speak with electrical engineers, with computer science people, with mechanical engineering and with human technology interaction. And that makes sort of the, the automotive engineer of the future. If I would be young, I would choose that study. Um, and if you look uh, uh, into the future, say like 10 years, where do you think mobility is going to be? Well, I think that autonomous driving is going fast. Shared mobility as a consequence of autonomous driving. I think those two are linked. Uh, and it will, it will become all electric, battery electric, I, I think. Uh, so that combination is, is really interesting. And it will mean a transition in the first time in 100 or 120 years of history of automotive that there is this huge and big shift from, uh, from um, mobility on combustion engines towards mobility uh, via electric driving, including autonomous, uh, autonomous driving and car sharing. Moreover, I think the fact that cars become autonomous might also mean that they will take their place in our energy system. So for the first time in, in history, you see that mobility and energy are sort of, sort of merging as areas uh, and, and we, can, uh, we can do bilateral charging, we can store uh, sustainable energy from wind and sun, we can that, 
uh, temporarily char uh, charge it or, or char uh, buffer that in uh, in cars. So car will become cars will become an, an, uh, a very important aspect of our whole energy system. That means that two previously separated areas, mobility and energy, are going to merge. So those are the things I see happening in the next next decades or so. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So the uh, future is electric and connected. This was uh, Professor Martin Steinbuch. Thank you very much for talking to us um, here at the EVS in Stuttgart.